Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's now Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. Hope your afternoon is going well. Let's take a look at what's going on out in the world of the tropics today. We'll start off with the University of Wisconsin site. The remnants of Arthur out here off the east coast, well offshore, and it's now post-tropical, and it'll no longer be an issue, so we will wait six more years until we use Arthur Again, over here, approaching India and Bangladesh, we have this cyclone that I'm not going to try to pronounce because I keep screwing it up, however, no matter how many times I try, so we'll just refer to it as the cyclone. No disrespect meant to the cyclone, but I think it's like um poon or I just, that's what I'm saying. I can't, can't do it. Uh, what matters, though, is not how I pronounce it, but the impacts. And as you can see, heading into extreme eastern India, and this area, as we have talked about, this V-shape to the Bay of Bengal there, very susceptible to storm surge, that right front quadrant uh, related to the track there. This is where you get the storm surge right in there. Four to five meters, it's already been put into motion. The wind counterclockwise around this system blowing onshore to the right or the east of where the center makes landfall and that piles up the water very efficiently into the Ganges River Delta and that low-lying area. It's fertile land. It's fantastic for farming. Brent tells me that it's a wonderful area of the world. I believe him, but he's actually been there. And uh, Brent, he's one of our patrons and he helps me out in the field work. And he was telling me about that area and how awesome it is and uh, but the problem is they have cyclones from time to time, and that can be a, a huge issue, especially with what we've got going on with the pandemic, people having to evacuate and maybe not being able to remain separate away from each other and all that stuff. Ugh, here we go. So we will be wishing for the best for our friends over there in Bangladesh and eastern India. All right. Looking at a satellite picture of the Western Hemisphere, lots going on here, tropical weather and some lower 48 interest. First of all, intertropical convergence zone kind of active down here where the trades from the Northern and Southern Hemispheres kind of meet and converge. That's why it's called intertropical convergence zone, the convergence part. So the air is trying to rise through here. And sometimes I call this like a grapevine and sometimes the grapes get ripe. And, you know, you can harvest them. And in this case, that means that something develops. Computer models not showing that anytime soon. Still have a lot of southwesterly to westerly wind blowing across the whole area. You know, it's still May, for goodness sakes. So the atmosphere is not quite ready. Even though the sea surface temperatures are warming, you still have other factors, the humidity values, all kinds of things that have to be uh, in place, I oftentimes talk about hurricanes as being the perfect wedding cake in terms of ingredients. Think about a beautiful wedding cake. And yes, hurricanes over the open ocean that are not bothering human activity are a beautiful work of nature. There's no question about it. But they have a lot of ingredients, complex ingredients that come together. And just like a wedding cake, the littlest thing can make them go awry. Believe it or not, as powerful as hurricanes and cyclones and typhoons are, they are very susceptible to the littlest thing, just like a beautiful wedding cake or just a birthday cake, you know, that, oh man, that's a gorgeous cake, and then you're driving it home from the store and you hit the brakes a little too hard and plop, off it goes. Anyhow, back to the subject at hand, that's my wedding cake, birthday cake analogy for the day. Just trying to help you understand using analogies. Upper level low here, spinning over the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, tapping into the moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico, which generally speaking is still warmer than average. Parts of the northern Gulf have cooled off, but it'll be plenty warm in time for hurricane season. No doubt about that, but that's a pretty solid slug of moisture overall getting pulled in, even across the Caribbean and uh, South Florida. Saw some severe weather yesterday in parts of South Florida. Different photos and videos and radar shots and satellite animations posted on Twitter. And it's an active pattern. It'll hang out for a few more days and then this will change. Now buried in here, right in this area, are the remnants 
of Arthur. Yeah, they are there, and I'll show you that in just a moment. I thought I was. Didn't I have the, um, I guess I don't. Let's go back to this. Uh, what was I trying to do? Let's see. Uh, that's right. I was going to show you the vorticity. Woo! So now that there's no tropical storm symbol, uh, I just completely lost my train of thought. Um, you can really see that vorticity of Arthur, the remnants of it, offshore. And this is this was my point. I should have had this ready. But there it is. That's the vorticity signature. But the satellite image, you really can't see it in there, right? Let me get rid of that, the light blue color. So Arthur, the remnants are located in here. Uh, but on the vorticity signature, it really shows up. Come on. I know you're there. I just think that's neat. That's why I like this tool a lot, because it helps you see through the cloud cover, so to speak, kind of like an x-ray does, where you can see through your soft tissue and any kind of stuff that probably shouldn't be there. Uh, and in this case, the remnants of Arthur are located over here. Not going to amount to anything, no worries at all. And there's really nothing else going on across these parts, uh, this part of the world not in the tropics or whatever. So now moving on to our, what looks like to me, um, an apple, right? It looks like an apple. There's the stem right there. There's the shape of the apple and somebody has taken a bite out of it. Or, or maybe Pac-Man with a, I don't know, um, something. Anyway, <laughs> it's the old Rorschach test or whatever, right? We're all going crazy. I'm not. I'm just seeing satellite images. It's all good, but what what does this really show? This is a nice graphic here, of uh, and it's not typhoon. We need to. Uh, I should get in touch with uh, Alex here from Cyclonic Weather, uh, Cyclone, Oompon or something. However you say it. I am so sorry, but this is a satellite still image, and uh, lots of deep convection overall with the cyclone. Uh, luckily, it is not as strong as it was, but again, that water, the track right up in here into eastern India, and the Bay of Bengal has already been put into motion, and this will cause a significant storm surge, and we can see that on the Google Maps here, assuming that the center makes landfall over here in eastern India, something like that, then again, it's that right front quadrant, this area over here, that would see the highest storm surge, just like we see in hurricanes. When they make landfall on the Gulf Coast, you know, the areas to the north and east of the center there uh, get the highest surge. And on the east coast, they're usually moving westward, usually, sometimes they go north, but you get what I'm saying. This area right here will see a significant surge, and we will see what the media reports from the area, social media, etc., tells us over the coming days. I did want to show you this. National Hurricane Center has the Tropical Analysis Forecast Branch. And I was mentioning this feature the other day. I thought it looked like a tropical wave. Turns out I was right. They are analyzing the first tropical wave of the 2020 hurricane season. There it is. It's a weak wind shift. So it's just a weak wave, a little kink in the overall flow of the trades there. Uh, some showers and thunderstorms, it has no chance of de developing into a tropical storm or hurricane. We can look at a close-up picture of it. This is what you call the wave axis right here down the middle of it. And you can see there's just an ever so slight wind shift in here. I'm kind of exaggerating it for you to let it stick out. Uh, and it's moving along and it's behind the wave here where the showers and thunderstorms are to the east of it. Here are the islands, the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad and Tobago over here. So maybe some showers and storms pop up kind of variety moving your way. If we look at the Weather Nerds site, this shows us a real good example of it here. Speed this up a little bit. There's the tropical wave right there, the axis right through here roughly. Look though, this is why it's not going to develop. A lot of reasons why, but Look at that strong flow of wind over the top. This, ladies and gentlemen, classic example of wind shear. You have this piece of energy, a seedling, coming across. That is, that's a seedling. It's It would try to develop if conditions were ripe, but they're not. And it's not just warm sea surface temperatures. Yes, the water temperatures through here are warm, and there is sufficient 
um, energy, maybe enough humidity, all the other stuff. But again, talking about the wedding cake, something can ruin it. If you forget one ingredient, it doesn't work, at least not the way it should. And these strong upper level winds that are coming through, a big, big inhibitor for this to develop. Check out the islands up here, the Northeast Caribbean, the Virgin Islands and elsewhere, these little streamers coming off of clouds. That is so neat to see. I like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, too bad. I don't know if anybody's ever tried it. This, and that's a product of the trade winds blowing across there in a fairly brisk fashion. Um, it'd be neat if you could get your drone up to, of course, you're not supposed to fly it above 400 feet, but just supposing if you could get it up to, I don't know, four or 5,000 feet and just plant it there for a half hour and catch these little streamers coming off, that would be really cool. That would be a great use of a drone if the regulators would allow. I'm just saying, it'd be kind of cool. you got to admit and look down here, there's a couple of little speckles. See that? I just noticed it right there. little blue speckle or a blue area that I'm outlining, a yellow speckle. That's the lightning getting picked up. Just a little bit of lightning down with some of these thunderstorms. And again, you folks in the islands can expect this tropical wave to pass through over the next day or two without much fanfare. And look, you can see it on the GFS. There it is. Oh, isn't that neat? Come on, I love it. Science is really cool. Numerical weather prediction, you name it. I just think this is all great. So there you go. That's the tropical wave. There is the uh, remnant signature of Arthur. Again, another example. Boy, it shows up well in the GFS analysis here uh, at the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. That's about 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. But good luck trying to find it on the satellite picture, right? It's supposed to be right over here somewhere. I just think that's neat. Anyhow, there's the upper level low. You can definitely see that on the satellite picture. And if we move this out into time, the tropical wave moves through the Caribbean there. And uh, this is about 36 hours out. And it's over here somewhere. Again, not much fanfare with it at all. But a moisture, a little bit of moisture increase and some wind shifts down there. But that's about it. Going through time... Uh, nothing down in the tropics to really worry about. We're out to about 96 hours here, so four days out. Nice area of high pressure starts to set up again. The return flow around this will pump warm, humid conditions up into the southern tier states right around the time that the crew and I, that would be Brent, he's down here in the Virgin Islands, and my friend Mike, one of my colleagues up here, his name is Mike Farrow, get used to that name, He's going to be joining us this year. All of us are going to meet up. Uh, Brent's actually going to fly to Atlanta over here. And we're going to head out and make our way over to this area next week to do all kinds of testing. And it looks like as the pattern evolves, uh, that southerly flow and then these pieces of energy coming through. You see that? See that right there? That's also vorticity, but that's the vorticity that you see associated with severe weather over the Great Plains. It's not concentrated, it's linear, and you get thunderstorms with that. But anyway, moving out to day four and five and six and seven, nothing down in the tropics. Just for fun, let's go out to day eight, day nine, and then day 10. I wanna show you what we're gonna be watching for. By day 10, look at these little flags down here, these wind flags. Um, that's interesting, and I'm trying to draw it in as accurately as possible. What do you see there? Yeah, it's a cyclonic gyre, the Central American gyre. And that, folks, is a, a, the subject for a future uh, maybe Hurricane U, uh, maybe a quick one. You know, I've got the hour-long versions that we do. In fact, the one this Wednesday, hello again. We're going to be speaking with a friend of mine. His name is Colby Sawyer. He's in emergency management, and he's going to talk about emergency management's role in hurricanes and other disasters. But I think maybe it's time to bring back somebody for another lecture, even if it's brief, 15, 20, 30 minutes, right? Maybe Jack Sillen from Weather Models could come on sometime, and uh, we talk about what is a Central American gyre, and why does it create the possibility of tropical cyclones? 
you know, either him or Eric Webb, somebody, that'd be really neat just to explain it better than I can. I'm good, but I don't know everything, and I'm not perfect, and I don't have a problem with admitting that. I love learning, and these people helped to, uh, me to do that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, what I was getting at, um, once we get out to about day 10, that's a large signal in the overall pattern that a lot of the modeling is headed towards. And what it generally means is the potential for tropical cyclone development. Usually that's in the Eastern Pacific when we see that signal, but not always. Sometimes it can be in the Western Caribbean or the Gulf. So once we get into June, that might be something we have to keep both eyes on, all right? Either the Southeast Pacific, the Western Caribbean, the Gulf, or all three. You never know. This is the kind of year where it wouldn't surprise me. All right, I only got a few of these left. Getting ready to put the ones that came in over the, uh, the orders the other day into the mail later today or tomorrow. I might wait till tomorrow since it's already after four. Big poster size tracking chart. I'll put the link to the PayPal uh, address, whatever. You click on it in the description of today's video. 20 bucks and you can help us with gas money or something like that. It goes right into my PayPal. I'll send you that map, and it's a fantastic, and as I've said this before, you might not have heard it yet, I drew that in Adobe Illustrator some like 20 years ago for some of my media clients and, and my corporate clients back then, and um, you can print these out. I get them printed over at Uprinting, and uh, it's just a really neat thing with all the apps and computer tracking that we have, a paper map, and if you get one of these, by the way, make sure you have a Sharpie. Doesn't matter what color, those work the best on these maps because they're kind of coated. I don't know if you can tell, but they're, they're coated. See that shine on there? Yeah, it showed up. They're not like a newspaper. They're good quality. So you have that on the wall of your office or your home office, as it were now, pretty much everybody. Um, your condo or your boat, it'll look really nice. So check out the PayPal link and order one for yourself. All right? That's it from me for today. I'll be back, of course, with more for you tomorrow, and we'll see what's happening around the world of the tropics. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thanks for tuning in to me. I do appreciate it. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.